first and uh it's so fun i got to i got to know her at one of our neighborhood gatherings so um and uh stephanie says hi pastor trevor <laughs> so stephanie dayton's also on youtube with us and then i know angelique wanted to join us on youtube too so so all right what is it Oh, no worries. <laughs> All right. So um, what you guys um, can do is um, just make sure that you have like a piece of paper and a pen, if you know, if you'd like. Um, if you happen to have the book, ha bring it, you know, keep it with you, but it's not required. I'm just going over it. So, you know, we'll, we'll have some back and forth, some questions too. And, um, and then we'll, we'll go through some scriptures together. Feel free to have your Bible or just listen. Um, this is, it's it's quite casual. It's a casual, um, you know, atmosphere. So just make yourself comfortable. You know, what a blessing that we can all still meet, you know, learn from from the wisdom, from, from this really sweet book about how to use our words in a way that um, is constructive and, and wise. And it talks about the power in words. We've actually learned a lot so far. <laughs> Um, and gleaned a lot. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, let's get started. So I'm going to open us up in prayer. And, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through um, some key points from this book, Away With Words. Um, the title of this chapter is Words That Reach. And then um, we'll go, we'll have a little Bible study and uh, hopefully glean some wonderful life lessons through this. So, um, sound good? Sounds great. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much uh, for these ladies. Thank you so much for this time together um, to read your word. Lord Jesus, I know that I need I need help every day with knowing how to use my words in a way that that honor you, God, um, in every aspect of my life, in the hospital and um, in the church and in the dance studio and at home with my husband. God, I just pray, Lord, that um, that you will do a work in my life, in the lives of each woman here that's going through this together with me thank you for the wisdom that you that you give through your word and we just pray that you'll strengthen us in this area thank you for this time together for this fellowship for these friends um we love you lord amen all right so um so the chapter nine is entitled words that reach so we've gone through when to be silent, when to speak up, you know, different aspects of how to be more effective in the words that we use. Um, and this chapter in particular is talking about uh, using our words effectively through evangelism and through the way that we talk to people, we can use um we can use things that the Lord has shown us to speak into people's life, to speak life. Because what, what does scripture do? It brings life, right? So, um, all right. So let's start. If, for whoever has their book, if you don't have your book, just enjoy and listen. Um, I thought it was chapter 8, but it's chapter 9. Yeah. Chapter. Last week was chapter 8. This week is chapter 9. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But um, so turn to page 120. Um, so basically I only have five key points and they'll go through certain things from, from the chapter and then we'll go through the questions at the end and, um, it shouldn't take too long. So, um, all right. So the first point is just, um, since this is a women's book study and we're, you know, we're growing together as women, I just found this fact really interesting and I never really... I never really um, considered this before, that the very first witnesses to Jesus rising from the dead were women. And they were the first people that Jesus instructed to proclaim his resurrection. Isn't that interesting? Um, 
And, you know, the beginning of the chapter talks about how when kings would come back from battle, like the women would be the ones to kind of welcome them, you know. So um, let's turn to page 120, um, the first full paragraph, halfway down. And if you don't have a book, don't worry about it. Just listen. It says, so Jesus died, right? He, he died for our sins. And then he, he rose from the dead and he conquered death. Um, well, it says here, um, Mary Magdalene sobbed. She says in John 20, 13, they have taken my Lord away and I don't know where they have put him. So she was actually speaking to Jesus and didn't, didn't know it. The man, the man she mistook for a gardener asked her a question. <laughs> Can you believe that Mary Magdalene mistook Jesus as a gardener when he rose from the dead? Um, woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? She answered, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, <laughs> she knew that voice. Mary sprang toward him and cried out, Rabbani or teacher, <laughs> uh, Jesus had a special task, an important assignment. Jesus had a special task, an important assignment to share with, with Mary. She was going to go immediately and tell the rest of the disciples the good news. He has risen just as he said. So we're actually gonna, um, in a little bit later on in this study, go into how scripture actually prophesies about Jesus dying and conquering death and raising from the dead, you know, thus declaring his, his um, status of God, right? Can someone turn off your phone, please? Or, or silence it for me? Okay. Oh, it's okay. No worries. <laughs> no problem, Jeannie. <laughs> All right, women were the first human beings to proclaim Jesus' victory over sin, death, and the grave. And it is still our privilege, our responsibility, along with our brothers. It's not just obviously for women, but I just think it's so cool how um, it highlights how women were, were the first one to discover Jesus' resurrection and find the empty tomb, right? But it's for both women and men to proclaim you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That's 1 Peter 2.9. Actually, you know what? Can everyone just silence, um, press the mute button, and then when you talk, just press the, un the unmute button to talk? Let's do that. That'll help with the static. And the background noise. Do you guys know how to do that? No, I don't know how to do that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so press the so press the screen, and then at the bottom there should be like a microphone, and click on that microphone, and um, that'll mute it. And then whenever you want to talk, just undo it and talk, and that way you guys don't have to worry about background noise or anything. Okay. So. Um, so, so basically, um, I just thought that was a really neat thing at the beginning of the chapter. Um, and it, feel free to read the chapter, too, after we finish today. It's really interesting. So point two is God called us to be light in this world. What greater time than now, right? Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, at the bottom of page 120 says, For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. There's so much darkness in the world around us. So many lost and lonely. So many hopeless, hurting people. People who live desperate, defeated lives, even though the victory has been won. Right? So basically... Um, we, we live in a world right now where people are quarantined. People feel uh, isolated. You know, people can feel kind of separated from their friends. They can 
Or some people feel like they don't have true friends, you know, or they feel um, like they're in a time in life where, where, where things feel empty, you know, especially in this time of waiting. We've all been there before. We've all felt hopeless at times. But, but the beauty of being a Christian is we know that we, we have hope in Jesus because um, of, the, of the light right? That we, that we know. What, what is the light that we know? Can someone answer that question? What is the hope that we have as Christians that allows us to be a light to people who, who feel isolated and like there's no hope for them? Well, we have God who's with us at every moment and says he will never leave us even after death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I thought of the life spent with him forever, away from the life that we're in now. Uh, so, so, so you're saying, uh, oh, and Stephanie says that we believe in God. Oh, that God gave his son. Uh, that's Stephanie Dayton. Um, that, that we would have eternal life, right? Thank you, Stephanie. So, yeah, that's so true. It's like God you know, God sacrificed for our sins. So it's not about all the good I do that earns my way into heaven. That's a, that would be a big weight. That would be a big burden. If getting into heaven was only earned by how many, how much good I did on this earth, right? The beauty of us being Christians is it's not about what we've done. It's about what's already been done for us, right? It's like Jesus died for our sins, gives us the greatest hope of eternal life through that sacrifice. You know, so beautiful. What would you say, Karen? I'm sorry. I didn't hear what Sue said. Oh, Sue, can you repeat what you said? Oh, can you unmute for me? I said what you said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus is a light unto our path. He is our light. Yeah. Amen. So true. It's not about this life. This life is like not what it's all cracked up to be, right? We, we won't find true satisfaction ever in this life, no matter how much we try. It's only through Jesus and, and the peace and hope that he gives through his son that there's a life coming that's way greater than this. <laughs> Such a blessing. Okay, so um, page 121 at the bottom, it, just, it says, Jesus has asked us to do, to be his witnesses. We're to tell others what we have heard him say, what we have seen him do and what we have come to know about his character, what we have experienced by being in a relationship with him. It says later on, our stories are powerful because they are so real. People can relate. They wanna know more about the one whose love has changed us forever. They wanna experience this kind of love for themselves. So basically, um, you know, I am challenged by this chapter in that, you know, what, what do I want to do? What do I want to live the rest of my life? Like fat in the word and have all, you know, have the hope of Jesus and just keep it to myself. How selfish would that be? You know, what, what a beautiful thing that this chapter is talking about where so many people need hope. So many people don't feel loved and they need to know about the love of our savior, a love that does never run out you know, and, and, um, a love that died for us. It's just, I, I was definitely very challenged by, by this, you know, how many times do I close my mouth out of fear of what, what they may say, what they may think, right. When, you know, there is a time to be quiet, but there's also a time to speak where people need that light of Jesus. So, um, so number three, um, tell your testimony. And what I would recommend is to first write it out, which we're going to be going through that at the end of the chapter um, for some, some instructions for how we can do that better, how we can write out our testimony and um, be able to be more confident to tell people about the hope that's in us uh, through Jesus. Uh, number four, we all come from different walks of life, right? So some, some of you may say, well, you know, my testimony is not really very, like, exciting. I grew up in a Christian home. 
uh, I didn't like go out and gang fights and like, you know, do all these crazy things all over the world seeking happiness and then, you know, make all these mistakes and end up in jail a bunch of times. So it's like, my story's not really exciting, you know? <laughs> and then, and then other of us who have, who have that type of past were like, well, you know, I don't really want to share my testimony because, you know, like, you know, I, I don't have as proper of a life that's approved because people are going to judge me for that. You know, that's actually what this entire next part is talking about, you know, and it, in scripture, it talks about people who've come to Jesus who have had both types of lifestyles. You know, it says here. Uh, there are dramatic stories, former thieves, prostitutes, murderers, adulterers, drunkards, demon possessed, even crooked politicians and corrupt religious leaders. But their stories are wonderful examples of the power of God to turn someone's world upside down, to change their hearts and lives miraculously. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Can everyone mute real quick? And then, and then just unmute when you want to talk. It's not an ex static, you know, echo. I'm, I'm using a telephone. I don't know how to mute it, but I don't oh. know that it's making any noise. Okay. Oh, Jeannie, you're on mute. Um, but anyways. It's not yours. Oh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, actually, I hear something go away. It got better, but okay. Good, I did too. Oh, you too. Okay, good. Thank you, Jeannie. <laughs> um, so, so their stories are wonderful examples of the power of God to turn someone's world upside down, to change their hearts and lives miraculously and completely, right? So that's, so that's one testimony that, that some of you may have. And then the other type of testimony, um, Timothy is an example of. Timothy had known the scriptures from infancy. Of course, he wasn't perfect. No one is. He needed a savior like everyone else. Um, Timothy's story is a wonderful example of the power of God at work in a different way. The power to get hold of a child's heart at a young age and to keep that child from ever wandering too far from the faith in the first place. It's something he still does. It's something God still does today. You know, so some people need to hear that God can lift you out of the gutter. Others need to know that he can keep you falling from into it. So in other words, we all have different stories, but God can use them in different ways in people in different people's lives. We all have different backgrounds. We all come from different places in life, but that's the beauty of being a Christian in that we're all family of Christ. We're, we're chosen, we're adopted, you know, into his family. And yet we can all come from all different, all different backgrounds and, and unite together as children of God. What a beautiful thing. And, and I see that in our church as, you know, as a family, uh, it's, it's just such a beautiful, the family of God. <laughs> um, and then the last point uh, for the chapter review is um, number five, the mission field is not just overseas, right? I, you know, like I know so many, I know all of you and I know that um, so many of us, want to go out and like tell the world about Jesus, but we're just not sure how, right? There's that vigor, there's that desire, but um, let's read uh, page 124 at the very bottom. This, that's what this is talking about. And I want to encourage you in that. The gospel of Mark tells us about a young man who felt this way. He had been possessed by a legion of evil spirits Night and day among the tombs, so um, this is scripture, night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Then Jesus came and set him free. In an instant, the demons were gone. So Jesus basically cast the demons out of this gentleman that was demon possessed, cutting himself, suicidal. And um, and Jesus cast this guy out. If you I would recommend to go back into Mark five and read that later on for yourself. It's quite a, quite a powerful story. What Jesus did in this gentleman's life. Um, but you know, it's crazy because the people from that city, 
they were terrified. They asked Jesus to go away and leave them alone. So like Jesus got, Jesus like healed this guy who was like suicidal and crazy, cutting himself. Like if you read the scripture, you'll see how, how insane and how much of a, um, how much of a, um, like what he made himself look like. It was scary for people. But at the same time, Jesus healed him. He cast out the demon. And this gentleman came to Jesus and was made whole again. And um, so Jesus got into the boat. The young man begged to go along with him. He was eager to leave everything behind and follow Jesus. He, he wanted to leave everything behind and follow Jesus and be radical. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said no. Instead, Jesus gave him a different assignment. Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. See, some of us are called to the mission field overseas. And some of us are called to the mission field in our own family. Um, and our, our own family's salvation is no less important to Jesus than the millions we will never meet. Though it may seem, though it may have seemed like a small thing, scripture tells us the young man did just as Jesus asked. Are we willing to do the same? You know, so I, I just want to encourage you guys in that. Um, I know it in my own family, you know, I, I have people that don't believe in Jesus. And, um, and am I willing to go and, and risk, you know, what they think of me? in order to tell them about the hope of Jesus. You know, they're my mission field, just like if I was to go overseas and, and tell them about Jesus. So I, I was very um, challenged by this. You know, the mission field is not overseas only. You know, what, what does Jesus say? Go therefore and make disciples in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, where was Jerusalem? Jerusalem was, was the closest to them in proximity. And then it was Judea beyond that. And then it was Samaria. So our mission field starts right here. Um, 1 Peter 3.15 says, In your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. 1 Peter 3.15. It's just, it's so important. Um I really liked this. Um, it said on page 126, um, halfway down the first paragraph, we post all the latest on our social networking sites, message boards, blogs. You know, I got these new shoes. Um, look, they're on sale. Or, oh, th this is the place, you know, that you need to go shopping. Or, hey, look at this thing that I tried cooking, you know, from this recipe on Pinterest or whatever. Well, just as readily and as naturally, and with that same breathless enthusiasm, why not share what God's been doing in our hearts and our lives today? You know? Um, and um, what, one more scripture and then um, here, where are we with time? Uh, let's see. Anyone? Oh. <laughs> I love you guys. You're like. <laughs> what is it? Oh, wow. Sweet. We're, we're doing great. Okay. Psalm 71 verse 14 through 18. Uh, we're going to, we're going to close here as far as reviewing this chapter and then go through a few questions and, and then close. So, um, I love this, this scripture. So just enjoy it and let's meditate on, on the scripture. Psalm 71 verse 14 through 18 says, as for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteousness, of your salvation all day long. Though I know it's, I'm sorry, though I know not its measure, I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, O sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteousness, yours alone. Since my youth, O God, you have taught me, and to this day, I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, till I declare your power to the next generation, 
your might to all who are to come. So basically, this is this is um, a testimony. He said, you know, I've heard of you through youth, God. Don't, you know, please stay with me. You know, I, I need you in my life till I'm older gray. You know, it's it's just such a beautiful, um, such a beautiful psalm. So we need to let him speak through us to reach someone else today. You know, so every day in the morning, let's just pray, God, you know, equip me through your word, through, you know, through journaling, through prayer, like, you know, through your Holy Spirit in order to love on people, to share the hope that you've given me. And um, the purpose of this Bible study that, that we're going to go through real quick at the end of the um, at the end of this chapter is to encourage each one of us to kind of write out our testimony. When you write it out, it really helps as far as sharing it with, with people and being ready to um, give an account for the hope that's in us and say what God's done in our lives. Um, so um, the first question from this Bible study is, after Jesus ascended into heaven and the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples, Peter preached a sermon at which 3,000 men and women became true believers. That was in Acts 2, verse 14 through 41. And more were added to their number daily. Let's read Acts 2, verse 20 through 22 through 28. So. So turn with me to Acts chapter 2, verse 22 through 28. It says, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pains of death because it was not because of him. I'm sorry. Because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him. So this is David um, way prior to Jesus' crucifixion, right? Um, Prophesying. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You, so he, he looks at the salvation of, of Jesus, right? You have made known to me the path of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. And if you, if you go all the way down a few more verses on verse 34, for David did not descend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So, you know, this is David's prophecy of Jesus, the son, sitting at um, sitting at the um, right hand of the father. Uh, it's just such a such a cool thing. Um, so. Bible study, uh, in in the Bible study, um, after number one, for those who have their book on page 127, uh, letter A says, um, read Acts 4, verse 13. What surprised the Sanhedrin, the Jewish leaders, about Peter and John? So Peter and John, uh, they were teaching at the time. Uh, read Acts 4, verse chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 13. Um, it says, now when they, is everyone there? I'm sorry. Okay, cool. Um, Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. It says, what surprised the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious leaders, about Peter and John? Can anyone answer that question from that verse for us? 
they were bold. Yeah. That's good. They, um, they were bold. I'm sorry, say that again. The NIV says they had courage. Yes, they had courage. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, what surprised them also was that they were uneducated common men. So they saw these people boldly preach the knowledge of God in a powerful way, seeing that these were ordinary men. They, you know, they, they didn't have some sort of special, powerful gifting that was impressive to, you know, it was more, they saw that through weakness, God's power was made perfect through them. And he used them in, in, in a powerful way. And then letter B says, to what did they attribute this? What did they attribute this to? Acts 4 verse 13, it says, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. And that, that, that also relates to us in that the more time that we spend with the Lord in his word, people will see that, you know? Um, so that, that's a really neat thing. Um, number two, what had, Jesus, what had Jesus promised his disciples in Matthew 10, verse 18 through 20? So um, for those of you have, who have your Bible, um, turn to Matthew 10, verse 18 through 20. And if you don't, don't have it on hand, just enjoy and listen. Uh, Matthew 10, verse 18 through 20. And I'm going to read it just because um, people on YouTube may not be able to hear you. And if you say something, I try to kind of relate it to them. Two. So, uh, all right, Matthew 10, verse 18 through 20. And you will be dragged before go governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak. But the spirit of your father speaking through you. So what had Jesus promised his disciples in this scripture? Any, anyone feel free to unmute and uh, share. When the time comes, they will be given the words to speak. The Holy Spirit will empower them beyond their imaginings. Yes, the Holy Spirit will speak to them. When, when it's their yeah. time. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, when asked to bear witness to Jesus, the spirit of your father, you know, will speak through you. Amen. Thank you. So uh, first Peter three, verse 14 through 15 tells us not to be fearful or afraid to share the reason for the hope that we have, but to remember who we are or whose we are. Right. And to be prepared, ready to give an answer to anyone who asks us. This exercise is meant to help you prepare to share your story, your testimony with others. Take some time this week. Um, so definitely listen closely because this is uh, a challenge for all of us. Take some time this week to make a list of the most spiritually significant experiences of your life. The key moments, the turning points. The things that have shaped you and made you who you are today. Here are some questions to get you started. So basically, I'm going to go through A, B, uh, I'm going to go through from A through E to kind of give you an idea of how to write your testimony. And basically, a testimony entails what was my life before Jesus came and, um, it came into my life before I came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and was saved <clears throat> and, you know, have a relationship with him. What was my life like before that? What was the transformation that did, that Jesus did in my life and how is my life different now? Right? So that's what this is going to kind of go through. And this is, this is so helpful. I actually, um, Trevor and I actually typed all of this out. And after our study today, I'm going to um, uh, actually you're going to see on the comment below this conversation uh, a link that will give you these questions. So that way everyone will have them and you can print it out 
and be able to use that this week in order to write your testimony. So that way you'll be able to see these questions and, um, and write your testimony yourself. And those on YouTube, uh, please text me so I can send it to you as well. So uh, letter A. Uh, so this is the first question that you'll be answering as you write out your testimony for what Jesus has done in your life. And you don't have to turn it into me. This is for yourself to go over. You can if you'd like, because I'd be happy to help you with it. <laughs> but um, this is more personally, like um, to be prepared to give an account for the hope that's in you and to write your own story for what Jesus has done in your life. It's really helpful. I, I wrote my own testimony. Um, and I, I'll, I'll just share with you guys briefly a personal example to kind of give you guys an example of how it would look. But let's start with the questions. All right. A. How did you come to faith in Christ? Were you raised up in a Christian home or did you discover Jesus later on in life? Was it a specific moment in time or a gradual process? What made you want to give your heart to him? Uh, B, what are the greatest challenges you've faced? The most difficult things to overcome. Have you had physical issues, health problems, family issues, financial struggles, emotional or spiritual battles? What hurts and disappointments have you wrestled with? What have been the low points in your life? Um, C, what about the high points? What are the high, what are the greatest miracles or answers to prayer that you've received? Have, how have you experienced God's presence in the midst of your trials and tribulations or in the peaceful, ordinary, everyday moments of life? Um, yeah, you know, it's funny because as you start to write out your testimony, it will actually help you kind of be able to see more of God's providence in your life and see how, wow, you know, look, you, you kind of look back and say, look how God showed up. You know, I didn't understand why I was going through that back then, but look at where he's brought me to now. And it kind of helps. It, it can even help in like the healing process from things in your past. As you write out things you've gone through and, and what God's done in your life and remind you of those pivotal rocks in your life that only God has, has put in place to remind you of his faithfulness, you know? Um, and then letter D, what have you learned about yourself through all of this? What have you learned about God? How might these insights be beneficial to someone else going through a similar experience? Letter E, do you have a life verse, a favorite scripture, or scriptures that uh, looking back over your life so far could be your theme, your motto, or your mission statement? If you've never considered these questions, because this is a lot, right? It sounds like a lot. But once you actually write down your thoughts and write your story, it's really exciting. Um, if you've never considered these questions before, you may want to take some time over the next few weeks or even months to dig deep. Discover what your story is about. Keep a record of your insights and observations about your spiritual journey, not only for yourself, but for your loved ones. Write it in a journal or scrapbook it. Talk about it with trusted friends. Hear how it sounds when you say it out loud. See what questions they have that might lead you to further insights. If you're ready to share with a broader audience, so this is after you know your story is written out um, about what God's done in your life, Volunteer to give your testimony at church, in a Sunday school class, or in a small group Bible study. Post it on your webpage, message board, or blog. You never know how your story is going to impact someone's life in a powerful way and can transform their life when they hear about what God did uh, in your life. Um, so, so, yeah, I wrote out my testimony. Um and um, do you want me to give you guys just kind of an example? Oh, I'm sorry. I totally just, uh, you know, was klutzy. Um, <laughs> clumsy. <laughs> so um, do you guys want to hear an example of what, um, you know, just my personal testimony in a, nut in a nutshell to give you some ideas? Yes. <laughs> Everyone's on mute. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. <laughs> so
So um, I love you guys. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. I I'm getting used to this new video thing. So, um, all right. So basically, I grew up in it. So I'm just going to give you a personal example of all these questions in like a two minute little blurb to, to kind of hopefully inspire you to write your own story. Okay. So I grew up in, in a, um, a, actually a pretty strong Christian home. Um, I had a lot of strong Christian influence in my life. My parents, you know, taught me Bible songs, Sunday school. Um, and I remember when I was five years old, five. There, I, I was at a service and they were talking about what Jesus did for me. And and I love the, the thought that, you know, I could go to heaven, just believing in Jesus. I heard about what he did for my sins. It was very Sunday school, like Jesus died for your sins. He rose from the dead and, and through his sacrifice, you can be forgiven of your sin and go to heaven. It's a free gift of God to anyone who accepts it for eternal life. That's what, you know, I understood. And um, I excitedly, you know, went forward that, you know, it was it was an altar call. And um, I decided to give my life to Jesus. And um, really ever since then, you know, I've, I've studied scripture and, um, and taken it seriously. But although I'm not, certainly not perfect, and I, I've had some some dark times in my life as well. Um, once I became like fifth grade through middle school i struggled through anorexia because i was a, i wanted to be a prima ballerina so so what did i do i starved myself because i thought that um in order to be a prima ballerina you had to be the skinniest girl in the room and that was the only way you were going to make it to the top of new york city right so um it got to the point where i was almost hospitalized and um and I remember I went to youth group. My pediatrician had threatened to hospitalize me and, you know, stick a tube down my nose to give me nutrition. And um, I, the pastor said, you know, you're made in the image of God. God loves you, you know. And I realized that my reality was not true reality. And that God's view of me was was the correct view, and and my identity was not in it was wasn't supposed to be in myself. What the media called beauty looked like, you know, anything like that. It was in God. So I rededicated my life to Christ, and um, ever since then, um, ever since that time, at an older age, you know, a little bit more understanding, um, I, I took the Lord. To a different level in that I had to trust him that he that his idea of beauty was what beauty was that I'm created in the image of God that I'm saved by his grace that I'm chosen by him you know and um just a, such a beautiful thing so that's when I really made my faith more my own you know so um so ever since then now I'm able to help other people with anorexia even with eating disorders with addictions with struggles and be able to share my testimony with them, give them hope and help them to know that like your identity shouldn't be in all this stuff. That's going to, we're all going to, we're all going to grow old and die. You know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're all going to, you know, nothing stays up. Okay. Nothing stays up. Don't put so much confidence in all of this stuff because it's not going to last. Our body is temporary. And our hope is in Jesus. And he's the only everlasting one that's forever and gives us eternal hope in heaven. So anyways, that was way too long. And I'm sorry, I meant to make it like two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, but that's just my personal example. Um, feel free to, you know, be detailed in writing your own testimony. And these questions will help help you in your structure as well. And if I just read it off here, it, it would have been a lot more concise. But um, having written it out kind of helps me verbally be able to share it in a way that is more logical, you know, so it can help you as well. Um, all right. So number four on page 129 says, ask the Holy Spirit to show you specific people or groups of people that he has given you the opportunity to be a witness to 
prayerfully consider how he might want you to reach out to them. So yeah, I would just recommend um, to pray for that. You know, pray, pray, all right, Lord, who do you want me to speak to in order to shine your light and love and, and make them know that, that God loves them, you know, and give them, give them eternal hope through Jesus. Um, so please just um, on your own tonight, ask God to put specific people on your heart to do that, uh, to, to share your faith too. Um, and the number five says, choose one of the following verses to memorize and meditate on this week. The message that I send you is, is not only going to have these questions, but it's also going to have these verses. So you can just look up these different verses and just choose one and memorize it this week. There's so much junk that can go in our minds from all the stuff on the media right now. And we need to make sure that we're filling our minds with true, um, with with what's true, what's noble, what's right, what's pure, what's lovely, what's admirable, right? Anything excellent. That's what we're supposed to think about. So that's the beauty of memorizing scripture. It helps us do that. All right. So that that is um, our book study um, on words that reach. Um, does anyone... Oh, Oh, how cool. Sorry. Stephanie just sent a message. <laughs> so, oh, I can't wait to hear your testimony, Stephanie. That's, that's so exciting. Yay. Um, so, and does anyone have anything to add? Any input that they'd like to share? How this spoke to you or um, maybe how this challenged you? How you want to apply it in your life? Well, I don't think there's a link that that's appropriate or not appropriate. I just, um, I just want to tell you, I appreciated your honesty. Oh, thank you. Said, but um, I, 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 I came from the, the refuge, and mm -hmm. we used to have to give our testimony a, a couple of times a month. Uh, yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. You're so. so we, how do you think we can um, make it so that uh, so that uh, we can give testimonies in our church more? Yeah. You know what? That's a great question. So those listening on YouTube, um, Karen just shared. Um, just some great input. She, you know, she said we all should be giving our testimonies and, you know, is there a way at church that, um, we could have an avenue to give our testimonies? I was actually thinking about that, Karen. That's a great question. I'm going to run it by, uh, pastor Trevor and we, we will definitely find a way where we'll, we'll, we will definitely figure out a way where we can share testimonies. That's such, such a great idea. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone anyone else? I'd like to pick up on a comment that Karen made, which was something to the effect that we should all have testimony for what the Lord is doing in our life right now. Yeah. Um, and yes, I think it is essential that we all know our story and be able to tell the whole conversion testimony. Yeah. We also lose day to day testimonies. Years ago, someone taught us. Mm -hmm. When you meet somebody, you always ask those like, so what do you do? You know, mm -hmm. what kind of family do you have? And mm -hmm. capture those teachable moments, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, I homeschooled our children, so that would create a conversation. You homeschool your kids, you know, why do you do that? And that gave me the opportunity to say, well, I used to not want to have to send my children away to school all day to the kindergarten. They don't need to be away from their mamas. And as I got into homeschooling, began to see how that's really my job because God instills them. And from there, we went into the whole gospel message. Mm -hmm. So we were taught to pick two or three things that were kind of common um, conversation starters, if you will. Mm -hmm. So you're born in the grocery store, you know. 
Joanne Grossby. There's some way you can take that conversation and move it into, you know, I used to really, um, yeah. your example would be great. You know, I used to be anorexic and I would never eat that. Yeah, no, I, I love that. You know, it was like, I, you know, I, I got to work the other day and I was like, you know, my husband, you know, I, I show up in the hospitalist office and I'm like, you know, I loved my husband's sermon today. <laughs> and, you know, it's it started a whole conversation with these, you know, physicians and other advanced practitioners that, you know, they're not around that kind of stuff. And they were like, they were curious. They were like, so what did he preach on? And it was just such a cool conversation. It opened such a neat opportunity to share, you know, and just like you said, uh, Sue, it's an everyday thing. And um, it's not a cookie cutter thing where everyone I walk up to, do I say, oh, do I tell them my entire life testimony? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just a little thing, you know, uh, yeah, I, you know, s someone's saying, you know, I am tired of being cooped up in this quarantine thing and I miss people. You know, okay, I can feel that way too. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, like having a relationship with the Lord, it's like this time, the Lord is allowing this time for me to have more time for prayer, for journaling, for scripture reading, you know, for things that. Um, you know, I didn't have as much time to do, I, I you know, I would kind of cookie cutter budget that time before where now it's like, now I have more time for that. And what a blessing, you know, it's, it, it is drawing families closer together too. And, and Hey, I work in the hospital. I see really sick people, you know, I'm admitting them to the hospital, but at the same time, there's things that God has planned lessons that we don't want to miss <laughs> through this time, you know? So uh, yeah, God can use the things of today for us to be able to share his love and his light and his hope with people. So, good stuff. Anyone, anyone else? I wanted to say something. Yeah, Stephanie, Stephanie go for it. Uh, thank you for bringing everyone together. I think yeah. this is valuable and it's not easy to have something like this. Um, but also going back to towards the beginning of the lesson with regard to diversity and inclusion, I think everyone comes from, you know, of course, different backgrounds, different education levels, different experiences. So mm -hmm. we can all bring different ideas to the table um, mm -hmm. with regard to how to communicate the word of God and also how to service our community. And especially in times like this, make yeah. each other feel like they're not alone. Yeah. And, things like that and support each other. And mm -hmm. I think it's really good that you're communicating all of these things. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. And let me tell you, it is so special that you joined us today. Cause I'm like, Oh, when I met you at the party, I was like, I would love to get to know her. Like, and I saw your husband walking around the neighborhood the other day. What is it? I know. <laughs> We should, definitely. Yeah, but definitely, you know, I really appreciate it. And I look forward to, you know, future meetings and, you know, getting to know everyone more. And yeah. thank you so much. Oh, I'm so excited. What a blessing. And Stephanie, Stephanie I think you're going to enjoy this group a lot. You know, we have like all different people from all different walks of life. And we come together and we're like all the same in, in a way because yeah, of funny, our connection. different life experiences and different ways that the same scripture can relate in like to so many different um, lives. <laughs> of course. So cool. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's encouraging. <laughs>